In the last video, we have seen how to use iterators in Python. Now in this video, we are going to learn how to use generators in Python. So first of all, what are generators? So generators are the simple way of creating iterators. Now simply put, a generator is a function that returns the iterator object on which we can iterate upon. So let me give you an example of generators and then we will see why it's a simple way of creating iterators. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a simple function, my func, and inside this function, I will use a special keyword called yield instead of return. Now after this keyword yield, let's say I want to return some values. So I'm going to write first of all A and then once again I'm going to use yield and I'm going to use B here and once again I'm going to use this keyword yield and again I'm going to return C here. So if your function contains at least one yield keyword then this function is called a generator function. So how this yield keyword is different from the return? So in the case of return, the statement is immediately terminated entirely. So after return, you cannot do anything inside a function because after using this return keyword, the statement is terminated entirely. But the yield statement pauses the function and saving the state of that function. So let me demonstrate what I said. So I'm going to create a variable x and I'm going to just assign the value of my function to this variable x. Now on this x, I can use a next function. So as I said, whenever you use at least one yield keyword inside your function, it becomes a generator. And I also said, when you use a generator, it returns the iterator object. So this my func generator function returns the iterator object, which we are saving inside the x variable. And we can provide this x variable, which is an iterator object, as an argument of this next function, which is going to give you the first value which you use with the yield keyword. So let me just run the code. So right click and then run the file and you will see it's going to give you the first value which you use with the yield keyword. Now after that, let's say we use this next function two more times, then it's going to give you the next value. And once again, when you use the next function, it's going to give you the next value. So it's like using the iterator on which you can use the next function, but it's much simpler to use because you just need to use this yield keyword instead of implementing the ITER method and the next method inside your class, which we have done in the last video. Now, after using next three times, because we only have used this yield three time, let's use the next function fourth time, because now in the fourth time, your iterator is already exhausted and let's see what happens. So you will see it's going to give you this exception which says stop iteration, which we have already seen in the case of iterators also, which I have shown you in the last video. So generators are similar to iterators, but they are more simple to use and create. So you don't need to throw any exception. The generator will take care of throwing this exception by itself. So what is the difference between iterators and generators? So as we have seen in the last video, that in order to create an iterator class, we need to implement two methods, which are ITER method and the next method. So if you haven't seen the last video, I will recommend you to watch that last video in which I have shown you how to create the iterator class. So whenever you need to implement the iterators, they are more lengthy and sometimes counterintuitive. Now in the case of generators, the methods like ITER and next are automatically implemented. So this generator, which we have implemented here will return the iterator object on which we can iterate upon. So now what's the role of this yield keyword? 
So whatever value you will write after the yield keyword, it's going to return that value. And immediately after that, it's going to save the status of your function. So that means, for example, whenever we call this next function for the first time with this x value, then it's going to return the first value which you use with the yield keyword. As soon as you do that, your function is going to save the status of this iterator. That means the iterator is at A. And then whenever you call the next method once again, your generator is going to remember that last time it has returned the first value and now it's the time to return the next value. And this will go on and on until you use this yield keyword. So let me give you one more example. Let's say I will declare a variable n and the initial value of n is 1. And then I'm going to just yield this value n for the first time. And also above the yield keyword, I'm going to print the value of n. So I'm going to just give this string. And after this string, I'm going to just print the value of n. Same print statement I'm going to use before the other yield keywords also. And before using this n keyword with other yields statements, I'm going to increase the value of n by one every time. So before the next yield, I'm going to increase the value of one once again. And before the last yield also, I'm going to increase the value of n once again. So we have used yield three times and every time we are increasing the value of n. And let's use the same initialization of my func and also I will use this print statement three times. And when I will do this, I'm going to run the program and you will see what happens. So let me use this next function only once. And when I run the code, it prints the print statement using this print statement and then gives you the value of n, which is one at the first yield. Then we have increased the value of n by one. So now the value becomes two. So when we call the next method, once again, it's going to give you the value of n and also it's going to print the next print statement. So let me just move this below this expression. So we will uh, see the increment here also. And similar, we will do with the third yield statement. So when I use this next third time, it's going to print the third value. So basically your yield keyword is saving the status after it returns the value associated with it. And it resumes the status whenever you use the next, next function. Now let me show you one more thing. And that is how you can use this yield keyword with the for loop. So let's say I will create a for loop and I will say for i in some range and let's say this range is up to five. And after this, I want to print the value of uh, i for example. So here I will print the value of i. And then what I'm going to do is inside this for loop, I'm going to return the value of i. So now, we don't need this n variable. So every time from the for loop, I'm just returning the value of i in each iteration. And let's see what happens. So let me use this next function only once. And you will see it's going to first print the value of i, which is 5 here, which is a little bit strange. I thought I have written here range here, but it was something else. So let's rewrite range function here. Inside this, we have provided five as the range. And once again, when we run the code, it's going to print the value of i, which is zero. Now, every time you use this next function, it's going to give you the next value of i, which is zero, one, two, until the five. So let me just run this code once again, and you will see it's going to give you the value until this for loop is valid. And as soon as you go outside the range, it's going to give you this exception, which is stop iteration exception. So everything in generator is working similar to the iterators, which we have seen in the last video. 
So how about we recreate the class which we have written in the last video when I have shown you the iterators example which is list iterator class. So I'm going to write a similar code to iterate over this list of numbers. So what I want to do is I want to rewrite this code using the generators. So let me just split this editor. So you will see iterators and generators side by side. So I'm going to close this from here. So on the left hand side, we have a generators file. And on the right hand side, we have the iterators file. So let me just remove this code from here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new function and I'm going to name it as list iterator function with the smaller l and smaller i. So this function takes a list as we have seen in the case of list iterators, which was taking a list as the argument. So here also we are going to give this uh, argument, which is list. And inside this function, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a simple for loop for i in, and I will iterate over the list which we have provided as an argument. So we will iterate over this list using the for loop. And then we are going to yield the value of i every time when we iterate over this list using this for loop. And that's it. So it's that simple to recreate the whole class of iterators using this generator. So the biggest advantage here when we create the generator is we don't need to implement this ITER method or this next method. And we also don't need to raise this exception from our function or a class whenever we create the generator. The generator function will take care of this stop exception by itself. So the only thing which remains now is we just need to create a list so we will use the same list as we have used with the list iterator class. And instead of this class, I will just replace it with this list iterator function. And you don't need to do anything. So you don't need to use this iter method to get the iterator object. This function is going to return the iterator object by itself. So now we just need to call the print function and the next function and inside the next function we just need to pass this variable which we have got from this generator function which we have created and when we run this code so i'm going to right click and run this uh, code once again it's going to give you the first value of the list which is one and when you do this several times let's say we call this function six times which is the length of your list also is going to iterate over your list and print each and every value which we have inside the list. Now, if you use this value seventh time, that means our iterator is exhausted, it's going to automatically throw the stop iteration error. So we don't need to create or raise this stop error by ourselves. Generator function will take care of it by itself. Now, as we have seen in the last video also, we can use a for loop with the iterators. So you can also write for x in your my list variable, and then you can print the value of x every time. And this is going to give you the same result. And you can see it gives us the same result, which is all the elements of your list, which you have provided here. So now this whole list class is performing the same operation as this small piece of code, which we call generators. So let's discuss the advantages of using generators. First, we have already seen that generators are easy to implement. Second is generators are more efficient if you want to perform the same logic with the normal function. So let's say you want to perform the same functionality, which is to iterate over the list of these numbers. And let's say this list is big enough. Let's say this list length is 1 million. Then if you are using the normal function, your normal function has to store all the 1 million values 
inside that list variable and that's not very memory efficient but whenever you use this kind of generators they are more memory efficient because they are not going to store 1 million values in the variable your generator function is going to work on the values one by one so let's say you want to stream some data let's say you want to stream a video and you don't know the length of the video then in those cases the generators are much efficient because they will work upon your stream in steps it's not going to wait for your stream to come entirely and then work upon it. So generators are good to work with streams also. So these are the few advantages of using generators in Python. So that's how you use and create generators in Python. I hope you have learned something new this time and I will see you in the next video.